why IgG as the target? Uh, would other proteins also work? Uh, not for this specific purpose. So we have tested many other proteins. Uh, some of them change with age, but IgG is a molecule which balances inflammation. It's one of the, it's the most abundant glycoprotein. It's the most abundant antibody. And this is the molecule where these glycans actually do the work. They regulate inflammation. This is why we measure IgG here. So uh, we, in a lab for research, measure other proteins. They can be indicative of other things. For example, if we are talking about diabetes, then some other proteins are more informative than, the gly than immunoglobulins. But if we are talking about aging and, uh, and uh, inflammatory processes, then IgG is the molecule of choice. Did you, have you ever looked at gly glycosylation in different tissues? I, I mean, but, but I suppose if you're looking at the, the IgG, it's in the blood and it's going everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but so can you so tell- we looked, we looked at tissues, we looked at different fluids. For example, we looked at saliva, we looked at uh, cerebral uh, spinal fluid, we looked at uh, the, um, the fluid in the joints. Synovial fluid? Synovial fluid, and they're different. So even IgG, if you look IgG in saliva and IgG in plasma, it's not the same. So glycosylation is a bit different in saliva than in plasma, and we don't know what are the reasons and how quickly does it change? So we were for some time thinking of switching the glycan H test to saliva as a sample, but we have to do a lot of research to explain the difference between blood and saliva. And also, for example, we know that when um, IgG is transported from a mother to the fetus, the glycosylation is also different. So there is a glycosylation specific transfer. So it's, it is complicated. Uh, other proteins have information. We do look at tissues. We look at changes in uh, brain with aging, with development. Um, you know, glycosylation is everywhere and it can, can have a lot of information. Right. I was just wondering whether like the, the age of the different tissues would come out to be the same within the kind of so, like... So since we're looking at IgG, we cannot look at age of different tissues. Right. because we look at IgG. So um, this age of different tissues, this is something which was so nicely shown by, by, the, by the Steve Horvath and, and epigenetics, that the methylation is changing in different tissues in a predictive manner. So uh, methylation age and glycan age are two different aspects of aging. And when we look at the accelerated methylation age and glycan age, they actually don't correlate much. So you can have accelerated glycan aging, but not accelerated methylation aging. So these are two different processes. I think methylation is more reflecting on what is happening within the cell and kind of uh, entropy of epigenetic information with aging, while glycosylation is looking at the level of an organism, which is trillions of cells working together. So it's, um, there are two different aspects of aging. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I was going to ask that. How many? How? And and so they show different different ages as well. I assume. Um, so then again, you know, the the, the number is just a number. Age is just a number, and the glycan age is just a number, and methylation age is just a number. So it is informative a little bit, but the most important thing is how does it change with time? Right. So are you really? Uh, aging slowlier or faster or even going in, in a reverse direction, especially for glycan. So the problem with methylation is we, we really don't know what are these individual CPG sites doing. So they were selected randomly because they correlate with age. For glycans, we know which, what is the role of these molecules. We know that the young glycans are so-called young glycans are suppressing inflammation the old ones are promoting inflammation. So if we show that you have more of the younger glycans, we know that you're suppressing inflammation, which is in majority of situations good. Very rarely, and for a very short period of time, we need inflammation. 
So we need immune system to go somewhere and kill everything. And then we rebuild it normally. Like when we have a, when we cut ourselves or we got infected with a I don't know, bacteria or something, we need inflammation. But majority of the time, we don't need inflammation because one thing we are often forgetting is that beyond the age of 35 or 40, we are more or less living on a kind of an overtime because there is no genetic pressure in evolution to keep older units alive, older individuals alive. So our genes have been optimized for a lifespan of 35 years. And until 200 years ago, the majority of people would live until, until the age of 30 something. And now majority of us live until the late seventies. And there is no genetic pressure which would keep all our, all our uh, functions optimal in this uh, overtime. And something what happens, obviously, inflammation gets out of control. So we get more and more inflammation as we get getting older. There's this inflammation theory that aging is driving inflammation, inflammation is driving aging. So it's a vicious circle, which is kind of putting us under stress. And um, if we can control it, if we can slow it down, this is general, generally considered good. So the, this is what we are trying to tell to people. You know, we have these glycans, they are promoting inflammation. If you change them in a way to suppress inflammation, we know that this will lead to less complex diseases. 